Hi, I'm Dan. I'm going to be giving you a behind the scenes look at a recent project which presented many unusual development and design challenges. I'm called a senior engineering analyst and I've been with the company since 2018. I particularly enjoy the varied engineering challenges and this project will showcase some of our key strengths. Just in case you're wondering, outside of work I'm a keen cyclist, a dog owner and I enjoy hiking. We were tasked by our customer with the design of a high pressure pump unit to replace a pump currently in service. This situation created two main challenges. Firstly, the unit had to be modular in design to allow it to be delivered to the platform and then fed through gaps between existing equipment to its final location. Here, it will be reassembled in situ. The design team had to make it as easy as possible to disassemble and reassemble to minimise the amount of time taken for these activities both onshore and offshore. The second challenge is that the new pump generates a flow 100% greater than the original pump. This means that both the main pump, main motor and a lot of the auxiliary equipment would be significantly larger. With limited space on the platform where the old pump skid has been removed, the design of this skid had to be as compact as possible. Watch out for the next update. To test this three module design, we carried out hand calculations to check the loading of the joints and the deflection of the structure. We considered several different joint designs. However, this showed that to design the joints with the strength required would be unfeasible due to the excessive bending moment and shear loads we would need to think again. Find out how we overcame the problem in the next update. To overcome the issue highlighted in the last update, we needed to modify the base frame design. The solution was to use appropriately sized PFC beams along the entire length of the skid, with fabricated frames as cross members in between the two beams. This design was then created in solid edge, prepared for analysis in space claim, and then analysed in ANSYS mechanical. The weight of the equipment as well as the torsion created by the driveline was considered. This modelling was supported and verified using hand calcs. The base frame has now been bolted together. Three fabrications as cross members and two side beams running the length of the unit. Planning ahead, the electricians have already started to fix in position the stainless steel cable tray. You will see that there are AV mounts fitted to the underside. These protect the deck and the platform by minimising transference of vibration from the unit. At the heart of every cold or well service pump package, is a reciprocating plunger pump. Most of our packages use triplex pumps, but due to the power of this unit, a quintuplex pump was required. These proven and robust pumps, which conform generally to API 674, are selected and configured to suit the customer's exact duty requirements. The pump fluid ends are manufactured from forged steel and are designed with easy maintenance in mind offering fast access to valves, packings and plungers. In addition, the internal suction and discharge valves are designed specifically for aggressive slurry injection processes. These valves have clear flowways with specifically formulated replacement inserts for resistance to acids and abrasives. This is Richard working on the pump packing oil system. Our packing oil systems deliver a fixed flow rate of oil, removing the need to adjust for different operating pressures. Using an oil system decreases component wear and tear when compared to using grease on the packings. The coupling on this unit is API 671 compliant with the exception of a shorter distance between shaft ends. This allows the overall package to be as small as possible. This all metal disc coupling requires no lubrication and incorporates a plug-in feature 
to allow installation and removal without disturbing the pump alignment. The unit needs to be designed to withstand blast loads. Particular emphasis is needed for the environmental enclosure. Should a blast event occur, the structure of the enclosure needs to ensure that no part can become a projectile. This was the second time ANSYS Mechanical was used on this project. Once the complete enclosure was modelled, the specified blast load was applied. The results of the analysis were checked for any excessive deformations and failures. Some minor modifications were required and these were checked with further analysis. Several iterations of this process were carried out and the results of the study were fed back to the design team to be implemented. Our test setup is suitable for most of the units we manufacture. However, there are too many variables to account for, so sometimes extra equipment is required. We reviewed the testing requirements for this project. We needed some minor items like hydraulic fittings, hoses and filter screens, and also generators and a chiller package. Our current setup includes an 1800 kilowatt VSD, flow rates up to 250 meters cubed per hour, and pressures up to 4,000 bar. See what equipment we use in the next update. This is one of the most powerful units that Kohler have ever produced. As such, we've had to hire in a lot of test equipment. Behind me is two 1250 kVA generators and associated distribution board. We've also had to hire in a complete chiller package which includes two chillers, which you can see behind me, with associated generators, a control system, and heat exchangers. The chiller unit performs two tasks. The fluid we use for testing is water, which is recirculated into an atmospheric tank. Energy is put into the water by the pump and results in the water temperature returning to the tank increasing. At this power level, the water would heat up very quickly and boil. The chillers keep the water in the tank below the design temperature of the system. For ATEX testing, the temperature of the pump is monitored at multiple locations. Temperature stabilisation is required so that maximum surface temperature under normal operating conditions is proven. To enable this, the chiller unit has a control system which maintains a constant water temperature. This is the unit running during the factory acceptance test. Due to a well-balanced machine and a thoroughly considered test setup, the pump ran with very little vibration and within the allowable noise limits. The chiller package performed perfectly and kept the test water at the correct temperature. The unit has now been disassembled and these are some of the items packed up and ready to go. In this crate is some of the environmental enclosure and in this crate we've got the long beams of the base frame.